friends today we are going to take up a very important topic in laws of motion chapter and this topic is constrained motion this is also you can call it a connected motion now connected motion or constrained motion happens because one body is constrained to move in certain manner there is no physics behind it but just that the system has some sort of constraint the object is bound to move in a certain manner like for example i am moving on the sur on the floor right i can only move horizontally and suppose an object is sliding down an inclined plane can only move along the incline right so these are very straightforward and simple constraint to deal with at times what happens multiple bodies are connected together using pulleys or whatever arrangement then motion of one object will affect the motion of the other object fine so because of this one body affecting the motion of other object there is a relation between the displacement velocity and acceleration between the two objects so that is what we are going to deal in this particular section and you will know you will see that whenever you solve any physics problem in mechanics you will have a set of equations which are newton's equation where you will write sum of all forces is equal to mass m acceleration right you draw a free body diagram and you write these equations along x and y axis and many a times you will see that number of equations are less and variables are more the rest of the equations are constraint equation right and many a times you will see that it is a constraint equation that is making the problem tricky these newton second law equation force equal to mass m acceleration these are very easy to write once you take component of forces and after that you can easily write sum of all forces is equal to mass m acceleration along x and y axis but when it comes to constraint equation you need to visualize a lot okay so that is what we are dealing here okay now in constraint motion you will see that one object affects the motion of other object and there are various ways you can deal with the constraint motion equation so you can find the constraint motion equation by visualizing the relative motion if you can visualize how one object moves relative to the other object at times you can easily get the constraint equation fine in the second one you can use the property that a string is inextensible so whenever we solve mechanics problem usually we assume that the string is inextensible it does not extend so what does it mean it means that along the string whatever two points you take their relative displacement relative velocity and relative acceleration must be zero so along the string all these motion variables will be same because string length is not changing right in the third way we will try to find out relation between the acceleration of the object using this particular thing that work done by all the internal forces is zero the internal forces does not do any work right now many a times you will see that you can use any of these three approaches to find out the constraint relation it is up to you to pick the appropriate one yourself and get the constraint equation easily and in this particular section we will be dealing with all three and right now i'll be taking one one uh, examples for all these uh, way of finding constraint equation in the next video we'll have a set of problems where we'll see how we can best utilize these three methods to find out the constraint relation fine so let us first take this one visualizing the relative motion here i have taken one example in which a, a mass small m is kept on a wedge of mass capital m fine now what can you say about the acceleration can you say any definitive statement about acceleration of small m or acceleration of capital m we know that capital m will always move horizontally right so we know the direction of acceleration of capital m that is let us say capital a right what about acceleration of small m can we 
से समथिंग अबाउट एक्सेशन ऑफ स्मॉल एम वी नो दैट स्मॉल एम इट विल स्लाइड डाउन द इनक्लाइन राइट बट द प्रॉब्लम इज इनक्लाइन प्लेन इज ऑल्सो मूविंग विथ एक्सेशन ए ऑन द राइट हैंड साइड राइट हैड द इनक्लाइन प्लेन और दिस वेज बी एट रेस्ट देन आई एग्जैक्टली नो द मोशन ऑफ स्मॉल एम इट विल बी अलॉन्ग द इनक्लाइन बट राइट नाउ इनक्लाइन इज ऑल्सो मूविंग सो वी कैन विजुअलाइज इट इट्स रिलेटिव मोशन फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ आई ऑब्जर्व स्मॉल एम मोशन रिलेटिव टू कैपिटल एम वॉट आई मीन इज दैट वी वी आर सब्रैक्टिंग मोशन ऑफ कैपिटल एम With the motion of small m, so only relative motion you are observing. So what? How will you observe small m motion with respect to capital M? Small m motion with respect to capital M will be down the incline, isn't it? So with respect to capital M, it moves down the incline plane, but its total acceleration is this small a acceleration. down the incline and the acceleration of wedge also because not only it moves relative to the wedge but it also moves along with the wedge right so if i have to mark the acceleration small m i can have two acceleration one is that like that and one acceleration is like this fine and the wedge will have acceleration capital a in the right hand side direction fine so you can then take component of capital a this is theta you will get acceleration along the incline component as a cos theta and this acceleration as a sin theta right so along the incline net acceleration of small m is a minus a cos theta fine and perpendicular to incline small m acceleration is a sin theta right so this is how you use visualization of relative motion in this particular problem all right in this section can i use a property that this string is inextensible to find out the relation between acceleration a1 and acceleration a2 if this is acceleration a2 i can find out acceleration along the direction of string how much it will be it will be equal to a2 cos of theta right so what happens in a string if i draw just a string like this this point is coming towards this side with acceleration a1 and that point is going away with a2 cos theta right so if a1 is not equal to a2 cos theta then the string length will either increase or decrease isn't it so along the string their acceleration displacement and velocity must be equal so that is the reason why in this particular case a1 will be equal to a2 cos theta fine so this is the constraint relation in this particular case right now let us move to third one work done by all internal force must be zero now if i consider this as my entire system i am taking all three masses together what all internal forces you see there is normal reaction right there are forces between the pulleys right and then you will also see the tension right so let us try to find out work done by tension work done by tension because work done by normal reaction will be anyway zero there is no motion of mass m1 in vertical direction but with tension what happens if if i say that this is tension t1 this is t2 and of course this will also be t2 because the string is same right here tension will be t1 with the tension what happens there is a motion also along the direction of tension right so 
the work done by T1 on M1 will be M1 into X1 sorry work done by T1 on M1 will be T1 into X1 if I assume that M1 moves X1 distance right and then work done by T2 on M2 that will be equal to what that will be minus of T2 times X2 if I assume this that M2 goes up by a distance of no I am assuming that M2 comes down by a distance of X2 right and I am assuming M3 goes down by a distance of X3 now in this case X2 won't be equal to X3 had this pulley been fixed then X2 will be equal to X3 but since pulley is also moving down then we are not sure whether X2 is equal to X3 and that is the reason why I have taken both M2 and M3 acceleration down also if pulley is fixed acceleration of M2 if it is down M3 will be up I am taking the absolute acceleration the net one right so work done by T2 is minus T2 into X2 because X2 is down and T2 is up so it is a negative work done minus T2 into X3 is equal to 0 fine so there is a relation between T1 and T2 also if I have free body diagram of this pulley then I can see that T1 minus T2 if I draw free body diagram of this pulley let me call it as P1 this is T1 this is T2 and this is also T2 so I'll get T1 minus 2T2 is equal to mass of pulley which is 0 into acceleration so T1 minus 2T2 is equal to 0 so T1 is equal to 2T2 right so I'll get this equation as 2 times of T2 x1 minus t2 into x2 minus t2 into x3 equal to 0 fine and I'll get x1 is equal to x2 plus x3 by 2 so if m2 is displaced by x2 and m3 is displaced by x3 then m1 must be displaced by x1 which is equal to x2 plus x3 by 2 this is a relation between displacement but in laws of motion generally you will get equation for acceleration so if i differentiate this twice rate of change of if i have double derivative of x1 i'll get acceleration a1 so if, if I differentiate this, I'll get as a1 equals to a2 plus a3 by 2. Fine. So this is how you deal with this particular problem using work done by internal forces is 0. Fine. Hope you like the video. So we have touched upon three ways to deal with constant motion and in the upcoming video what we'll do we'll take several problems and try to find out the constant relation only because generally this equation or this relation only makes the problem tricky right so thanks for watching the video